Yo, what's good? It's your boy Dixon from Twitter Designs. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to design shirts like represent clothing in Photoshop. For those who didn't know, represent is a luxury streetwear brand based in UK and they are very well known for their vintage graphic tees. As you can see here, we'll be working with a lot of filters and effects, but I'll try to keep everything simple. So hopefully after this video, you can do this too. All right, let's go. So guys, make sure you download the assets for this tutorial first. Link is in the description. Also, the free asset for this week is a Thunder PNGs pack. We will be using it anyway in this tutorial, so better get everything below before we begin. Um, of course, it's all free. You just gotta drop a like and subscribe so that I can keep this channel running. Now, once you got everything, when I create a new document, go to this print tab here and then select A3. Leave the rest of the settings as this, but change the background to black. After that, go to the assets folder and then select the dark photo. Unlock the layer and then hit C on your keyboard to use the crop tool. And then just drag the sides like this. Now we're gonna resize the photo cause it's too small now. So go to image, image size, and let's bump it up to 2,500. For the next step, if you have the latest Photoshop, just go to this quick actions panel here and then select remove background. Otherwise you're just gonna have to use the pen tool to manually crop it out. Um, right now I'm just gonna clean up the edge a little bit because it isn't that perfectly cropped by brushing on um, the mask layer. After that, I'm going to apply the mask layer and then use the spot healing brush tool to get rid of these two lines here. Um, once you've done that, the next step is making the teeth sharper so that the dog looks, you know, even more intimidating. So go to filter, liquefy, and then using a smaller brush, just gently drag it down like this. We're going to drag the sides too, just to make them even bigger. Now you do this on every visible tooth for both top and bottom. Once you're happy with the result, just hit OK. Let me show you guys the before and after. You can see that the dog looks even scarier now. I know it isn't realistic, but why not? Now that's done, we can start adding some effects now to give the dog that vintage painted look. First off, convert the layer to smart object, then go to image, adjustment, curves. After that, click on this graph right here and then click another one up top. Then just drag the two points slightly to create this sort of wavelength. And then click on the middle of the graph to create the third point. But for this one, you just drag it up kind of like this. Now we're going to add the second effect. Go to filter, camera raw, then click on this presets button here to apply a filter. Um, you can see there's tons of filter that you can try it out first. But for this tutorial, we're just going to go with turquoise and red and then just hit OK. All right, so now we're going to move this layer to the working file. You just drag the layer like this and then drop it here. Now I'm going to flip the dog horizontally. So go to edit, transform, and then flip horizontal. After that, let's rotate it to negative 173 degree. All right, so now using the pen tool, we're going to crop the head of the dog like this so that the cutting line um, on the bottom flows better because now it kind of looks too, uh, it kind of ends too abruptly. So kind of go around the head like this and then right click on it select make selections and then apply a mask layer and there you go all right moving on we're gonna open the starburst photo let's put 3400 for the width make sure that the constraint proportions is on and then the color mode is rgb and then hit ok now go to filter noise and add noise set the amount to three and then hit ok now I'm going to use the threshold adjustment layer to create three different levels of the starburst. First one, I'm going to set the threshold level to 40 and then select both layers. Um, option command E to merge, turn that merge layer off, 
For the second one, we're going to set the threshold level to 110. Again, repeat the process, select the layers, option command A to merge, and then turn the layer off. Now the last one, we're going to set it to 240, and then repeat the same process. And now turn the first merge layer back on and then go to select color range, click on the white area and then hit OK. Click on the mask layer button, right click on it and then apply it. Now you repeat the same process with the other two merge layers. And then once you've done that, we're going to rearrange the layers from the smallest to the biggest. And then select all three of these layers and then just drag them to the working file and then hit command G to group them. Make sure it's beneath the dark layer. Now let's move the smallest threshold layer to above the dark layer because we'll be using it for something else later. After that, convert these layers to smart object individually and then command T to select the group, then rotate it to about negative 148. I kind of like this rotation because I can see that there's like this halo that goes around the dark set and I thought that looks pretty cool. So open the group layer, then apply a color overlay to the biggest threshold layer. And then just like usual, I have pre-selected the colors already. So I'll put the hex codes on screen. Um, just copy and paste them. Okay, now that looks pretty good. Now turn the smallest layer back on and then convert to smart object. And for this one, I'm gonna make it smaller and put it over the dark side just to make it even more sinister. The rotation is up to you. I kind of just wing it here, but um, yeah, after that, apply a color overlay, but this time I'm going to put it in this off-white color. Now, I feel like the bottom of the dog's head ends too abruptly. So to fix that, I'm going to brush on the mask layer to bring back the section that we just cropped earlier. So I'll select soft brown brush, make sure the brush color is white, and then the blending mode is dissolve. Now hold the command key, then click on this layer here to turn the selection on. This way we won't paint it outside the selected section. And then now just gently brush it like this. After that, command D to deselect and that's it. Next step is adding a text layer. I'm going to go with Eden Made. Um, it's a random brand, by the way, that I just made up if you're new to this channel. Um, anyway, the font is Old London, but you can use any other Old English font too. Uh, let me just fix the kerning a little bit. After that, right click on the font layer and then let's convert it to shape. We only want the outline of the font, so leave the fill to none and then change the stroke color to this gold yellow. Again, the hex code is on screen. And then um, go to stroke options, click align, click on this one right here. After that, change the stroke to 10. Moving on, I'm going to play with the shape of the font, so command T to select, click on this icon here, go to warp, and in the drop down menu, select arch, then in the bend section, put in 40. Once you've done that, you should have something like this, command T to select and drag it like this to make it bigger. Now I'm just going to move the dog and the background lower because I don't want the font to overlay with the design. Next step is adding a secondary text. I'm just going to put in establish in 9090. Um, of course, this is just random. You can just do it however you want. Font is Kovadika, but just like the previous tutorial, always use a different font for the secondary text. Final element is adding some cool thunders. So go to the thunder pack folder and select number four and five, drag them into the working file. Then I'm just going to lift this part so you can rotate it however you want. But just remember to put one thunder layer under the dark layer and then another one above just to give it some depth. You know, so like the thunders aren't just slapped onto the design. Um, colors for these thunders are the same off-white color on the dark's eye, so just copy that. Also, you can clean up the thunders part that overlaps with the font like what I'm doing right now. But if you like it messier, then just leave it. Moving on, select all the layers and group them. Um, let's rename them correctly because it's a bit of a mess right now. Um, after that, I'm going to add another filter to the dock. So I'll go to filter, filter gallery. Under the artistic section, select dry brush and then just follow these exact settings to achieve that final painted look. We're almost done now guys. So I'll go to the assets folder and select this desert photo. I'm going to use this to achieve that distressed look when the design is printed on the shirt. Um, this kind of aesthetic works best if you're printing on vintage washed gray tees because it's got that worn out aesthetic. 
Um, anyway, apply a threshold layer, set the level to 30, option command E to merge. Now go to select, color range, but this time click on the black section. After that, command C to copy, go back to the working file, command V to paste it. Then convert the smart object, scale it down like this to make sure it's within the canvas. While holding on the command button on your keyboard, select the crack layer to bring up the selection. Then click on the design group layer to apply a mask layer. Finally, we're going to invert the color. So just hit command I to invert the color in the mask layer to bring everything back up. Finally, we're going to add a texture layer over the entire design to really sell that vintage look. So go back to the assets folder and select this paper texture photo, drag it into the working file, scale it down link it to the group and then set the blending mode to multiply if you're happy with how this looks then you can just stop here and be done with it but for me i want the design to be darker so i'm just going to use the curves tool to do that so just copy this graph right here and we're done <laughs> That's it for today guys, it is a harder tutorial and I noticed that while I was editing this video I kind of went too fast so comment any questions you have below and I'll do my best to answer them. Don't forget to subscribe for more free stuff every single week, follow me on TikTok, Instagram, stay safe, catch you on the next one.